we're back with our wood design series. We did tabs for the NDS, for the NDS supplement, for SpeedWiz. We did a few beam design examples. And now we have one more for a glue lamp beam because there is something, there are several things that are different about the glue lamp beam. And one of them we're going to highlight on this example. If you're studying for the PE exam and you'd like direct feedback from me and from other people who are also studying for the exam, I created a Discord group and you can join in the link below. There it's the easiest way to get a hold of me for questions that you may encounter on the PE exam and for us all to, to grow together in the structural engineering community. Also, if you want to reference this example later on, you can download a PDF of my solution in a link below. All right, so the problem here is determine if the glue lamp beam below is adequate for positive bending at mid-span and negative bending at the interior support. And we're given the load, the glue lamp beam size and, and mark, and also that all the adjustment factors are one. So we see that this is a two bay continuous beam with a uniform load. And we're gonna divide this into three steps. The first step will be to get our beam geometry. I'm not going to go to NDS for, for this, but you can go to table 1D and get the width, the depth, and also the section modulus. The second step is to go to NDS supplement table 5A, and we're going to get bending design values. And this is what I wanted to highlight for a glue lamp beam. We came to table 5A of the, of the NDS supplement, and we can find our beam mark right here, 24F-E1, Southern Pine, Southern Pine, and we have two bending design values. One is for positive bending. The bottom of the beam is stressed in tension, and we have 2400. For the top of beam stressed in tension, or negative bending, we have 1450. This is important because a typical sawn lumber beam will not have these different design values for bending. A glue lamb beam is made of lambs, and because of that, we end up having two different design values for bending, for the top lamb and for the bottom lamb. Now we're back at our calcs, and to get the moment, we just need to multiply the design value times the section modulus. Because all the adjustment factors are one, we're not even gonna go into multiplying all of them for a glue lamp beam, but you could go to the NDS and see all the adjustment factors that you would need to use before multiplying by the section modulus. But here then we get 15.6 kip feet for the positive moment, and for the negative moment, 9.6 kip feet. Now the third step is to find our moment demands. And one little trick here is that this is a continuous beam. If we go to the steel construction manual, table 3-22C, and we'll go there together, we find here these moment coefficients for a continuously loaded beam with equal spans and this number is 0 0.07 for positive moment in terms of WL squared, and for negative moment it's um, 0 0.125. It was hard to see on the table, but here I drew the diagram with the coefficients that we can use for our problem. With that, it becomes really easy to find our moment demands. We have 0 0.07 times 0 0.08, which is our load, times the span, which is 10 feet. We end up with 5.6 kip feet for positive moment, which is less than our allowable. Therefore, our beam works for positive bending. Now for negative bending, we do the same calculation and we get 10 kip feet, whereas our allowable is only 9.6. So it does not pass for negative bending. And that is something that we always need to keep in mind when designing glue lamp beams to make sure we check for positive bending and for negative bending because their capacities are different. If we come back to our options, option D is the correct answer. I hope you learned something new with this video. Don't forget to download the PDF in the description below if you want to reference this example later on. 
and also join the Discord group if you're studying for the PE and would like some extra feedback and accountability. I'll see you next time. Thank you.